Right, hello everybody, welcome to Blade 2993 versus Silsay. Um Silsay won the toss with his undead and chose to receive Blade with humans. Um, Silsay won, well, I say won, it, there's no way to know if people won and took different tickets or not, but he was the one qualifier from Franco Ball, and he's just made a Kaz there. Um, Blade using his Apo to stop it. Reroll with a triple down. You don't see that every day. And what a good reroll it was. It gets a Kaz from it. So two Kaz in turn one is going to ma make the humans very hard to stop the uh, undead drive. But then, you know, you, in a way, versus good coaches, you kind of expect a 1-1 one -one draw. So, it, you know, it's not going to hurt him too much. I'm surprised he appled the first one because it was just an unskilled lineman. The second one, I think, fair enough. You know, you are that because you don't want the, you don't want the uh, snowball kind of effect. But a uh, bit of a strange apple there on the first straight away. Um, so yeah, ne neither played champs ladder very much. Silse was the Franco Ball qualifier from PC, and Blade is an Xbox coach, one of the two who qualified from Fable. Um, so there's your background. Um, the Necro went with a standard block on a ghoul, uh, guard and tackle on whites, and with the additional skill he went with another block ghoul. I, the more I think about it, the more I think I would have just gone a block sure hands ghoul, just to try to shore up the worst matchup, because Undead are still a great pick versus all, all the races really. Um, and while yes they would get you know, arguably more value in the other matches with a guard on one of the mummies or an extra block or a wrestle on another ghoul. I think the sure hands would be really good for the wood elf match. So I think that's what I would have gone if I did undead. And one of the reasons why I didn't go undead. <laughs> because, you know, again, some people the sure hand wouldn't make much difference and the tackle wouldn't make much difference. So you'd just be left with one guard. Horribly outguarded here, three guard to one. Um, Blade with kind of the standard choice of 12 players and uh, and a tackle mighty blow three guard and a block ogre. Not not what I personally would have gone with, but standard choice. And obviously, um, Silse has, I should have mentioned this, Silse has gone for the standard four ghouls, 12 players. You could go three ghouls, 13 players as a variation. I, I could understand that, but pretty much everyone goes for four ghouls. But but th this format's a bit different. So in normal cham in normal NAF style, you you get six skills. So you want max ghouls because you want blodge and rog ghouls. Now with this stacking, I could see that I could see the rationale behind having three ghouls because you you know then you could stack skills onto them and stuff, um, or stack skills onto the whites. So if you can't blodge the ghouls, they're not as good. But I still would have at least had three ghouls, whatever happens, and I'd probably go four. Yeah, I think I think guard, the second guard would be a good shout. You know, obviously against against humans, he would have probably rather had a guard on one of his mummies rather than this block on the ghoul. Um, but so I guess the really the choice would be guard on the mummy or sure hands. And really, guard on the mummy is never bad. So I guess maybe I'll have gone guard on the mummy. But I, the, the more I think about it, the more I like you should your hands on a ghoul. So there you go. Uh, Blade gets a cast straight back at him. So evens the odds somewhat. 10 versus 9. Not such an advantage for the undead now. Yeah, I need to make Jim Shards the uh, the currency on the thing. I'll have to look at that after the stream tonight because I'm I'm committed to I'm committed to the, all these all the all the World Cup action, of course. The the problem the problem that I find with Undead is if they if they lose an un, if they lose a mummy 
They look like a shit human team. I don't know who 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 came out with that. Maybe it was Shawnee. This is a bit risky, isn't it? This lets you get this lets them get pressure on here. Either tackling this school or booking this with the ogre. I mean a bit risky to activate an ogre blitz. I think I would have still wanted to stick him on though. I think I would have stuck the uh stuck the ogre in here and blitzed him and based the ball. Um you know, protected him with guard maybe or something. So a bit more passive from Blade, but he's gonna he's gonna blitz him of course. But there, block block saving him. So so Silsay feeling very good about his choice there. I mean, you really do want protected ghouls. So th there's no real easy answer what to do with the undead. You know, you definitely want ghouls protected with block or wrestle, and then. You, you want guard as well because guard's amazing. You need tackle. You could go guard tackle there, or you could go mighty blow tackle. You know, you could go blodge guards for your ghouls to use your doubles. So it, I just I just didn't like undead. You know, they're, they're still a great race, but I just thought they had a lot of problems in this format. Not and not easy answers. Not easy answers as to like what to take with him and stuff, but this passive turn did leave him a good a good switch over to the other side, didn't it? Getting the, I like getting the mummy on the tackler. But yeah, that's the thing with it, that, that's something else to think about with this the, the stacking skills you see, you know. You basically never see Mighty Blow tackling tabletop, uh, like NAF style events, but lots of people are going to have Mighty Blow tackles. Yes. So again, staying clear of the other mummy, um, with essentially the only player who can knock over a mummy. Um, but then this obviously makes him a lot harder to dislodge. If he blitzed the mummy, he could have got blitzed away. Now it's, it's very hard to move the ogre. And that, so I like, I like this move a lot. Basing with the ogre, obviously risky to activate him, but I like I like basing with the uh, with the mummy tied up. He does get to one dice. This mummy free for a double GFI to hit. Oh no, he could block him first. So, oh, he's got guard, so we can two D him up, block him, and then blitz with the mummy. That seems the play, doesn't it? But he doesn't. He's risking it all on the one in nine dodge, um, you know. And that's it. It's it's not wrong. It's not wrong to do that because while you could free up the ghoul from the marker by blocking here and then blitzing there, then how do you protect the ball afterwards? Obviously, he thought, uh, Silsay thought it was worth the risk of the dodge um, because there's more payoff if you make it. But it is a big risk dodging with agility three. And <laughs> he failed the dodge, but the mummy gets the ball. <laughs> wow. I mean, you know, he, he still makes that dodge eight times out of nine. It's not crazy risky. It's just an uncomfortable risk to have to make, isn't it? You know, if you, if you could make that something else, you would. Oh, a bit of a... Bit of a greed reroll there, wasn't it? Was he hoping for a cast so that he could hit the ball? Well, that seemed that seemed like rerolling for a cast, didn't it? Or, or I guess maybe it's a both down or something. Wow. Well, well, was that a failed dodge over here trying to get the guard in? I guess three rerolls, but only three turns for the for the undead now. They want, you know, they're going to want to try and chain away the ogre or something. Oh, no, can just straight up block him. And uh, they want a hand up. Wow, double skull. Okay. <laughs> it's the power. Yeah, cha chain, the, chain the second guy away. My first instinct was to chain the ogre away, but when you've got when you've got mummies, you can chain the other guy away, can't you? Um, he's going to want to have a handoff option, isn't he? Because if he gets the mummy based, he can't dodge. 
So while he is in range to score with JFIs with the money, he, he wants to have agility three players to hand off if he can. He doesn't have to hand off now, does he? He's still got time. He wants to hand off as a last resort. He, he still wants to have the ball on a strength five guy who can GFI to score. And then that makes it a lot harder to, for um, Blade to stop him when he, you know, when he's got when he's got on the strength five. I think I think that's fair to leave the ball in Blade's court, kind of. Yeah, Blade kind of playing it safe here, isn't he? Uh, I'm not sure about the, the Blitz. Because he's given him the... I guess he's got double base. Now, now the handoff is appealing, isn't it? Because with a double base, it's not so easy to clear them. And then move forward with a position this catcher. Especially with just a push. So when I was watching this live, I did call out the handoff to the ghoul and, and running diagonally here. And uh, I believe that is what he does go for. It's a three plus, and then it's a dodge with dodge, and then he's got two rerolls, so he could make the GFIs. <laughs> Fails it, <laughs> and then rolls a double one. So that's horribly unlucky to double one it, isn't it? Um, if he hadn't had the reroll, he wouldn't have made the GFI. But that's really unlucky to to uh, fail the GFI there. One in thirty six. Um, I think the first round of the World Cup should have just been a group stage, so that you know it would have been, if it, like the real World Cup, if you'd had like a four-team group stage, so it would have meant that everyone who qualified would have got three games, and had kind of more of a. I, I didn't like this so much. I think I would have. Hmm, I don't know. Like I like I like going for the pickup. I think you've got to go for the pickup because it's too easy for me to just one dice. One dice the blitzer and then pick it up. That's like that's insanity. You can't leave it like that. Um, but then he did the dodge to get round. Um, and then pick it up and everything. It worked out for him. I think I might have just gone with the GFI to pick up. Um, but you know it certainly it certainly worked out for Blade there. But yeah, you know you couldn't just stand him there and then not go for the pickup because then you just you just lose too easy to lose if you stand there and don't attempt the pickup with anybody so he, he did make up the pickup eventually so i like that play you know kind of good desperate defense from blade there down to down three men instantly and then although he made a cas he did well to nearly stop it didn't he i mean obviously eight out of nine dodge fail and then the scatter and everything but you know still say played well and blade played well and yeah it did well to stop him Got a cheeky scoring threat. A mighty go tackler, so he doesn't really want to base him with a ghoul. So, and Silsa did he well here as well, getting people based up to stop the uh, stop the handoff, like pe double based, so he can't do a handoff pass combination. He's just gonna have to do a really long pass here, maybe a, possibly a long bomb to the uh, blitzer. <laughs> I don't like losers brackets. Uh, I don't like losers brackets to be honest. Just personal, personal preference. I don't like loser brackets. And he, so he made the pass. He made the five plus pass, and then uh, one in nine the catch. Poor, poor sod. So you know. 
at the end at the end of the half there, Blade would think he was unlucky failing that one in nine uh, to score, but ultimately he only got the chance because of the one in nine from Silse. And but then you know it's not just that; it is the sum of all the decisions that everyone makes over all of the turns. So you know, I think both both you know in every game people are going to mostly play very well, aren't they? And then it's easy to focus on the more contentious moments or moments where maybe I would have made a different decision and again that's just personal and not saying that they made wrong mis you know made mistakes or made wrong decisions in the balls in Blades court now isn't it he's, he's done the hard part stopping a defensive drive whilst taking two cars in the first turn gets a removal without mighty blow and the Kaz without mighty blow <laughs> I'm not sure I like setting up a goo blitzable, but I guess he didn't want to concede a fast score. I guess I guess uh, Silse is going for the one 0 win here with this really wide setup. I would have gone more rule of five. Luckily, he doesn't get his goo splattered by the mighty blow tackle hit he gave on him. So yeah, now now the boot is on the other foot, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> because now we've got to see how Silse defends two men down on turn one. Quite passive, I guess. Three dice blitz, though. I do love three dice mummy blitzers. And blocks. Boom, even the odds a little bit. It was Mighty Blow that got the AV break to make it okay. I mean, Mighty Blow is great. There's no arguing about it, is there? Though, obviously, some games it doesn't fire at all. Um, some games it's completely amazing. But the thing is, guard is. Guard is the reliable one, isn't it? So, yeah, I like that moving up the ball, screening it before making the, the 2 dB and the 3 dB. Realistically, like, Silse's got to do something here, hasn't he? Because I guess Blaze let himself get split a little bit if uh, if Silse wants to go for it. I don't think he will. I think he's going to chobo it up and uh, play conservatively. Not sure. I'll, like, a bit greedy. Two dice block without block um, to get the mighty blow hit. Doesn't, doesn't, not punished for that slightly greedy play. Well, that's the thing. Look, somet sometimes Mighty Blow is amazing, but it's it's dicey, isn't it? It's an, it's obviously dicey. It affects the dices in a specific way when you get a knockdown. Whereas Guard works every turn, 32 turns of a game, not just your 16. 
it it works for their 16 as well so so guard is really a great skill super reliable whereas like he blows dice but it obviously removals are key so anything that greatly increases your chance of removals is good isn't it I like not getting too close but I don't like this not being a screen I think I would have kept a double screen here he's got the chance to go put some pressure on if he wants but he, he doesn't no, a greedy block without block, and uh, I mean it's it's not that greedy. It's obviously he might have to use the reroll, but he's not gonna. If he was hitting a defenseless player, I think he would have. You know, the uh, the block without block is worse, isn't it? But when he's hitting a guy with block, it's not so bad. But it's a bit risky when you're looking at maybe going to overtime. Like going to overtime is a win here for Silsey, isn't it? You know, he's he's failed to score on his own drive. So if he, he's planning on getting it to overtime, is, is his primary win. And his secondary win is somehow turning him over and scoring. pretty risky isn't it the ogre is likely to get knocked over the catcher is likely to get knocked over this is uh, a little bit a little bit risky I like moving away from both both mummies but then also it kind of sucks moving away from your, from your own uh, ogre doesn't it I like getting the, the two dice splits into another two dice block. Again, not afraid to make the two dice blocks without block, you know. Um, and he gets a, a huge cars on the guard there. Huge. He could have both down on all balls there. I wouldn't have hated it. Catch would have still been based up. Uh, I was only armor eight though, isn't he? I'm I'm so used to human catches being armor seven from tabletop and and uh, pre tabletop pre Blood Bowl twenty sixteen and Blood Bowl one and the real rules as far as I'm concerned. Mighty Blow actually not having an effect, but, you know, um, the, the, neither the tackle nor the Mighty Blow did anything, but it was a good, it was a good hit for a Mighty Blow tackle to make, wasn't it? So he should be safe here, shouldn't he? Maybe dodge this guy out to get him forward. He just left him there. Mm. Or maybe he moved him there. I, I, I'm not sure I like where he is. I think maybe he should have got a bit further forward. In the new in the Blood Bowl 2016, human catchers remain armor seven, but are 60k instead of 70k. Um, about eight, eight, two, three, seven, eight. The eight, two, the eight, two, three, eight in Blood Bowl two, aren't they? For seventy k, and the eight, two, three, seven in tabletop, but only sixty k, which is crap, really. They're, they're so much better being armor eight. So much better. This is a, this is a very tough turn. This was this was the point where I said this was the turn where um, Blade had to score. He wouldn't like it. You don't like giving the undead three turns to score. 
but I think he had to push forward and score here. Um, this guy could have given the assist and then he could have blitzed with a ball carrier and um, you know GFI'd on a push and scored on a power. I think he had to go for the score that turn. Um, he, he, he just he just can't really protect the ball here. He needs to dodge, doesn't he? He's got dodge, but he fails it. I mean, if he had if he had made the dodge, but he's just getting squeezed more and more. You know, he's got all these guys in front of him. He's got the the mummies near now. He's got like a numbers advantage at the point of attack, if you like, and even more now. I just felt like. I felt it was now or never for Blade there. And it looked like he did with the, with the first moves that he made. And then maybe when he just got the push, he kind of chickened out. But I think I think maybe he should have uh, he should have gone for the score then. So, yeah, that failed dodge gave him two dice in the ball and a recovery from the from the spring three, the seven three three seven blodge player, which is a pretty good player, isn't it? Pretty good player in a, in this kind of format. Just gets the push, but he gets an extra block out of it. The GFI. Very good. And then he can re-roll this here if he has to. Which he doesn't get to the power. So that was that was good, wasn't it? You know, I, I feel like people <laughs> people, you know, think that I don't give credit to people for doing good players, but of course I expect good players. Um it's the World Cup, you know. You you expect people to be making good players, don't you? And it's easier to kind of point out maybe mistakes or some where something where I've just done something differently. But um you know, I, I expected him to make the 2D and run the 2D, but it is good to do, isn't it? And some people wouldn't do it, so, you know. You know, credit where credit is due. The, the, people are playing, you know, at least 90% or whatever, or eight, you know, what, whatever you want to say, they're playing at least 90% optimally every game. It just comes down to risk versus reward and, you know, personal preference. And, and those kind of things, isn't it? It's where there's there's definitely a grey area every 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 move. There's like a grey area, and and then it's uh, I like the I like setting up the chain here, although it meant that he needed a pal. Setting up the chain was pretty nice to clear the tackle zones and uh, get the dodge away. I really like that from uh, from Silse. And with double GFIs, he's in he's in scoring range. And that's horrible, that it? You haven't used a reroll there. Like, even though, even though, like, Blade was quite likely to get the push here and stop him scoring effectively, I would have pushed here and not followed. I think this is a bad push direction and a bad follow because now there is there is a play and it's not even hard. I'll pause it. I'll pause it. Um, because there's a play here and it's not even hard. Um, guard zombie, no. Zombie goes here. Mummy pushes the ogre to there. Doesn't follow. Guard white comes in here. Ghoul goes there. And then this guard, uh, the tackle white goes one, two, three, four, five, six square hits him. Gets the push. He's got three assists, so it's two dice. Gets the push and pushes the ghoul into range. And then the ghoul can dodge a double GFI to score. However, um, what happens is an absolute misplay or mistake from Silse as he moves the zombie into this square instead of this square. And that wasn't even hard to work. I would have I would have I would have used my reroll on it as well. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you if you go to overtime, there's a 50-50 you lose almost. Let's 
So yeah, that was a, that was a huge, absolutely huge mistake by Silsay. And I mean, I, I'm okay with saying that was a mistake because I think, I think at least attempting, even if you're not going to re-roll the attempt at any point, I think at least attempting the chain push was absolutely the best play there. But I mean, you know, good play though. Good play to, uh, you know, and unlucky for Blade to fail the dodge that gave him the shot, but good play to, to get the shot and everything and, and get the ball and run away and get there. But wow, only two out of four come back. Huge coin toss. And the humans win the toss. But they they haven't got that many players, have they? Three, seven players. Now, <laughs> they've taken four Kaz and four KOs. So you can definitely say that Blade has been unlucky there. You know, although, although Silsay has been hitting a lot with Mighty Blow. And, you, you know, the humans have made two Kaz and a KO. But that, that's, that is out of the ordinary, even with as many Mighty Blow hits as he's made. You know, to be down five players and using your apple, that is that is that is definitely unlucky for Blade. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not as criticism as he'll say. He played, he played well, obviously, to get the turnover on that. Um, but that was just a bit of a... You know, and there's a lot of pressure. You can't expect people to play. You know, as I said before, I don't think anyone's played a perfect game of Blood Bowl. Arguably, there's not many perfect... Well, not arguably. I think Obviously, some, someone's looked into a random turn um, in Blood Bowl. Has to have done. But, you know, in, in, in every single game, it's unlikely people play a perfect turn, never mind a perfect game. Very unlikely for someone to play a perfect game, turn even, you know, statistically. If there was some supercomputer that could measure statistically a perfect um, turn. This is a this is a mistake though here. He put him in the wrong square, didn't he? I, well, I think it's a mistake. I think he should have been here, so he was screening. Also, I think I didn't like the catcher being so far forward because he's just going to get hit by the tackler. I would have had the catcher back here, or like or something, so he could have scored with GFIs. But it's all a bit of a moot point as he fails the pickup round. Glorious. Oh baby. <laughs> oh baby. Thanks very much, Bye Cakes. The 17 months, so thank you very much. Glorious. Why oh, is the 20th? Glorious! Thank you very, very much. <laughs> yeah, so that that was huge, wasn't it? You know, maybe he could have defended in a better way, but yeah, he he didn't have a screen, so that was that was a mistake. And you know, maybe maybe the pressure, you know, you can't expect people to play perfect anyway. And so you know, but yeah, not having a screen there was pretty 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 bad. You know, and maybe he was. You know, and it, plus there's emotional as well, isn't there? You know, he's probably pretty pissed off at the moment that he's had four guys cast and four guys KO'd. Um, he's definitely taken over the odds of attrition. He just needed a push there, and he would have had um, a route through to one dice this guy. Oh, no, yeah, one dice this guy, and then two dice this guy. Um, again, I could have maybe paused it, but I didn't, and it's all gone wrong. Let, let, let's keep it there, though. If he had pushed this white, the other blitzer, this blitzer who's had a GFI twice to get there, could have actually run around, one dice blitzed, got a push, then this guy could have used the guard to get a one dice push on him, and then the uh, thrower could have picked it up and passed it to the catcher and scored. But unfortunately, so that was a that was a tough one in nine. Um, and then so was that. <laughs> So yeah, brutal dice there in overtime for uh, for Blade, despite winning the despite winning the toss. I would have maybe thought about bringing the tackler back though, as well. 
but you know, really hard to be critical of these people. You know, I'm I'm not really criticizing them, you know, properly. I'm not I'm not saying they're bad or anything, but you know, um, they're they're on the World Cup. They're all good. It's just little crucial things, isn't there? You know, maybe it's, they're all under pressure. So, and also tunnel vision. Tunnel vision is a huge thing in Blood Bowl. You know, and like and just seeing things. It's so much easier to see things when you're watching than when you're playing. And this is the only guy who could possibly reach, but he's about to get three dice by him at me. <laughs> and smash to pieces. So yeah, congrats to Silsey. I mean, obviously he definitely got the better of the the armor break look. But then he did have he did have a bunch of mighty blow. So it's not crazy to do that sort of thing. <laughs> that's also true by Epiphany. But yeah, you know, that's the thing. It's like it is tough to not tilt and everything, isn't it? So Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not being super critical of Blade there, you know, although although you made a few fundamental mistakes on, on that on that kind of scoring attempt, you know, he's down loads of players in the World Cup. You know, it's uh you can forgive people for, for those kinds of things. And uh yeah, full credit to Silsa and both of them, you know, they it, both stopped the other guy's drive on, on defence, which is great. In fact, all offences failed in that game, didn't they? Um, Blade stopped the un stopped Silsay, then Silsay stopped Blade, and then Blade got scored on in overtime. So ev every every offence was a failure in that game. That's pretty rare. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.